Hi, welcome to another Lemon Amiga review. This time we'll be looking at the 1989 game from Ocean called Batman the Movie. The game is a direct license of the movie of the same name, made by Tim Burton. So here we go, level one. On the first level we get to explore the access chemical factory from the movie. And this is a scrolling platform level. Guys shooting and firing grenades, as you can see, it doesn't start very easy, in fact it starts hard right from the beginning. Uh, coming up underneath people, you get to use your bat rope to swing around the levels, you get to use the batarang to blow people away, and uh, as you can see there are tips and tactics for each stage of this level, uh, which you might not appreciate right at the beginning. There are things like acid drops and uh, uh, water firing from all directions uh, which you have to avoid and you also have to negotiate this map which is quite large and uh, it takes quite a while to figure out where you're supposed to be going and what you're supposed to be doing but practice makes perfect and uh, it all becomes second nature so let's skip through the level you can jump uh, climb up on top of, swing around of and drop down from all these platforms. So it's quite an open level and uh, once you get to know where you're going, these onslaughts can be dealt with with the appropriate tactics. And uh, like I say, I have very fond memories of this game. The game Batman was bundled with my very first computer, the Batman Pack. And uh, it was one of the very first games I was introduced to uh, when I first saw the Commodore Amiga. Um, in fact, I actually played it first of all on the Commodore 64, which is a valiant attempt to uh, come with the game. Uh, the, the graphics were blocky, to say the least, and the driving parts were in 2D, but apart from that, the 64 conversion isn't that bad at all. Uh, the version you're looking at at the moment is the, the two disc version and uh, eventually you complete level one you manage to get rid of Jack Napier by throwing him into a, a vat of green oil straight from the movie and that propels you straight onto level two. Now to me level two is the best uh, section of the game uh, it's a 3D driving experience and as you can see there's quite a lot of speed behind the, uh, the engine of this section. It's quite tricky because you're skidding all over the place and you also have to make these special turns. The arrow at the top of the screen will show you which direction you're supposed to be turning in and it's up to you to fire your back rope at just the right moment to hang on to a, a lamp and a uh, street light to negotiate those sections. You get three chances to, uh, to make those turns. Uh, if you virtually don't succeed, you get three other opportunities. And uh, as you can see, it's not easy at all. Sometimes it's, it's just as easy to bang into the scenery as it is to bang into these cars. Uh, there's quite a number of them, so uh, the point is the time limit is quite tight and there's a lot of distance to cover. And as you can see, my energy is already halfway down. So this is a very, very, very quick level. It's also a very tight level. I don't know exactly what you're doing uh, to be able to get through it all in one piece. The game, this section of the game reminds me a little bit of Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge by Gremlin. Um, although slightly different, it's actually more challenging to, to complete this level because of the tight time limit. Um, the only saving grace is that if you complete half distance when you restart the game, if you uh, run out of lives, you uh, restart from the same half distance point, which saves a lot of time and effort. Uh, the driving section lasts a good five minutes. That's assuming you don't get stopped by the police, that is. And then we move on to the third section of the game. And the 
third section of the game is uh, a mastermind type puzzle. Three of these items are required to uh, complete the Smilex formula and you have to find out which three. By selecting those items it shows you how many you've got right and the number at the bottom. A good tip is to pick three items that you definitely know aren't part of the Smilex formula and then narrow that down like this so that eventually you find the correct three. After which point you are treated to the fourth section of the game which is a, another 3D flying section except this time it's a little bit slower uh, given the player's discretion than the driving section. Uh, this time uh, Batman is flying the Batwing through the streets of Gotham trying to remove the Joker's balloons and uh, this requires steady hand-eye coordination because not only do you have to control the speed of the, uh, of, of the, of the Batwing, you also have to control the height and the direction of the, uh, of the craft as well. Sometimes if you go in too fast, it's very easy to crash into the buildings. If you miss too many of those balloons, you're in trouble. And that ultimately leads to the final section of the game, Gotham Cathedral. In this section, Batman must climb the entire length of quite a tall level to reach the Joker at the top. And this stimulus level 1 means negotiating enemies. And the enemies don't have that any particular AI that you need to worry about. And uh, by careful use of the bat rope, it is possible to negotiate the, the levels. There are split routes on offer. You can take up to four different directions to climb to the top of the cathedral with many sub routes on top of that. And as you can see, uh, rats hamper the progress, as well as uh, the usual shooters and grenade throwers of the first level. Uh, so the rats require a little careful timing to get around. What I like about this level is not only is it large, but you also never know how it's going to go. The, uh, the routes are completely up to you and uh, require the, the usual tactics of fighting, shooting, bat roping your way around the situation. So the AI isn't too clever, and uh, it's very, very, very basic, though it is a 1990s game. And uh, the level takes at least 10 minutes to get through, as you can see by the clock at the bottom of the level. Which means the entire game can be completed in somewhere around half an hour, 30 minutes. Which isn't too bad, really, for uh, a game of this type. Um, as you can see, um, uh, you can see the exterior of the building, the closer you get to the top, the, uh, the narrower, the more pointed the, uh, the building gets. So it becomes more and more claustrophobic, and the enemies become slightly harder, or should I say slightly more numerous. So, what I like about this game is it's very easy to get into. Fun at the beginning, hard on the driving section, uh, to, to level uh, to deliver a general all-round pleasant experience, uh, fun, and uh, learning to master how to swing and uh, planning out the levels isn't particularly hard, uh, given the age group this game is aimed at, and uh, things like avoiding rats and things like that always pleasant. Uh, there are a few tricks and tips, but mainly straightforward. There are uh, no leaps of faith, no pits of death, uh, particularly unless you land on the spikes, but those are easily avoided. Um, so the the entire experience, although quite simplistic, the uh, the graphics are uh, amazing by any stretch of the imagination. The sound is pretty average, uh, but the playability there's something about it that's quite unique and. Uh, learning curve is uh, spot on in many respects so I still occasionally like to put this game on to be a quick flash now and again uh, negotiate the levels 
and uh, congratulate yourself on completing Batman.